Hello, my name is Matt Williams and I would like to welcome you to the second video or review of my 2020 Subaru Ascent. This video is a follow-up to my personal opinions of the changes made in the 2020 model year of the Ascent. In this video, I will cover what did not change that I feel should have, my wish list for changes, and what I really like about my Subaru 2020 Ascent after driving the 2020 Jeep Cherokee in the limited package for a week specific issues I had with my 2020 Ascent. Before beginning my review, I wish to review a few brief disclaimers. They are, I am not a professional driver and I do not review vehicles for a living. The following are my opinions based upon my experience and should not be construed as a recommendation. And finally, we did not receive monetary compensation for the making of this video. If you like what we're doing on this channel, please remember to click the like and subscribe buttons and notification button if you wish to be notified of new releases. Your questions and comments are also greatly appreciated. So let's roll into what has not changed that I wish Subaru would. Beginning with my number one pet peeve about the car, the lighting in the rear cargo compartment. The rear ascent compartment borders upon cavernous in my opinion, offering up to 86 and a half cubic feet of cargo space. With the third road seat folded down and out of service, which is typically how we have it, there is approximately 47 and a half cubic feet of space, all of which is lit by a single poorly placed light. Often it's covered by cargo, be it suitcases or groceries, as you see in this picture. We used an auxiliary source of light for this picture so that you could see our point. It is also a safety issue. We do tow with our Subaru. And there are times that I do not remove the tow hitch for cause. There's been more than one occasion that I have bumped my shin on the hitch while accessing the vehicle through the tailgate with the poor illumination provided by the factory light. My rented Jeep also had only one little cargo light in the compartment, which is noticeably smaller than my Ascent. Maybe this is an industry standard, but I've come to think of Subaru as a manufacturer that offers more than the industry standard and I really wish they would add more cargo lighting. The heated steering wheel. My review would not be complete without my commenting on the heating steering wheel system in my Subaru. When I drive our truck and use its heated steering wheel, I can warm my hands anywhere on the steering wheel I desire. I can drive with one hand in the top or lean back in the seat with one hand in the bottom of the wheel. Subaru, in their infinite wisdom, and that safety wisdom do not allow me to indulge in my bad driving habits. Not if I want to warm my hands at least. The heated wheel in my 2020 Ascent only heats in the 10 and 2 o'clock, 9 and 3, 8 and 4, and 7 and 5 o'clock positions. I must admit that the ploy works though because if my hands are cold and I want to warm them, I grab the wheel where the heat is. It just feels funny, like the car is doling out a reward for my practicing good driving habits. If Subaru is going to reward its drivers for good habits, why not offer something more exciting, like my dash dispensing cheesy popcorn when I drive the speed limit? Or better yet, my center console cup holder filling with coffee ice cream when I remain off my phone. These are reward programs I can get on board with. Okay, okay, I'm getting the getting off track signal from behind the camera, but I hope I made my point. Number three on my list is the passenger seat. I still maintain that in the top trim package, the Subaru Ascent should offer the same adjustability in the passenger seat as they do in the driver. While the passenger seat is not uncomfortable, it is less comfortable than the driver and even the rear captain's chairs in my opinion. This simply just should not be the case. It further adds insult to injury when my passenger seat in my rented Jeep offers eight-way adjustable travel and lumbar support to match the driver. What's up with that? Number four on my list is the integrated brake controller, or rather the fact that there is none. The Subaru Ascent offered in higher trim packages such as the Touring can tow up to 5,000 pounds which is a respectable weight for a vehicle in its class. To achieve this, Subaru stipulates that trailers towed weighing over 1,000 pounds should be fitted with an independent braking system. 
Smaller boats in this category will usually have surge brakes, which are adequate because of the curb weight of the Subaru Ascent and can be backed down a developed launch ramp safely. I point this out because surge brakes are only designed to brake in forward motion and do not provide braking in reverse downhill. Cargo trailers, like the one we tow, have electronically actuated braking, which is accomplished from a brake controller. I have purchased a separate controller which works splendidly. The problem is placement in the driver area. There is very little real estate to place one, and it is unsightly. I would really like to see Subaru offer an optional towing package that includes the hitch and a brake controller integrated into the vehicle systems. One could argue that this should be placed in my wish list category, but if you tow as frequently as I do, it feels more like a need than a wish. The last item on my needs to change list is the way the reversed automatic braking and object proximity alert are disabled when reversing while towing a trailer. As I demonstrated in my 2019 Subaru Ascent video, in the 2020 model year, you still have to press the individual buttons on the infotainment center to disable them. And as with my 2019, my 2020 Subaru Ascent would re-enable the two functions when shifting from reverse to drive and back to reverse again, most of the time. And sometimes it would not re-enable them. According to the resident specialist at Dick Hanna, after checking into the matter, he could offer no explanation for the inconsistency. Having to disable these functions nearly every time I engage reverse when towing a trailer is at the very least frustrating, and in my opinion, potentially dangerous. If you tow a trailer regularly, you know that there are times you may need to pull forward and back several times to complete your desired maneuver. You may also need to back up quickly and having to press and hold the reverse auto braking button to disable the auto braking could rob you of precious time when towing a trailer and having to reverse quickly. I would like to see two physical buttons that I can depress to disarm these features and have them remain off until the vehicle is restarted. As a final note, it is possible to disable the obstacle proximity alert, but not the reverse auto braking through the menu system. I don't recommend this because it is a cumbersome process and it will not reactivate when the vehicle is restarted. I will cover how to do this in my recommended settings video, which will be released shortly after this video. Now let's take a look at my wish list for future improvements. Side mirror reverse tilt. This feature tilts both driver and passenger side view mirrors down to an optimal angle that allows the driver to see a curb or other ground obstacles when reversing. If you parallel park a lot, this feature is a must. I've observed the reverse mirror tilting feature on several different make and models, including the rental Jeep I now have. I must admit it is a particularly useful feature, and I will miss it when my Subaru is returned to me. Side mirror memory. This function remembers the side view mirror's position when each set memory is entered, which means that when a memory button is depressed, or a door opened with a fob which has seat position saved to it, the mirrors will move to the position saved, thereby reducing time needed to set the driver vehicle preferences. Additional seat position memory. Our Subaru Scent Touring has two hard settings on the door panel, plus two factory provided fobs with additional memory settings can be assigned. In my family, just one more hard setting on the door panel would be nice. There are some pros and cons to having your seat memory tied to your fob, which I will cover again in my recommended video settings. A hood hinge spring versus a hood prop. Until recently, this was just a pet peeve, but by chance I learned that I am not the only individual that expects the Subaru SUV flagship would have a hood spring hinge. Prior to my dad purchasing his new 2020 Subaru Ascent, he was looking under the hood of mine. When he was finished, he immediately began pulling down on the hood to close it, which of course could not happen with the hood prop. No damage occurred, but it was nerve wracking to watch. It's not only a finish detail, but where we live, it is also a safety concern. On the Oregon coast, it can be extremely windy with powerful and often unexpected gusts. Gusts powerful enough to lift the hood and force it off the prop, then slam the hood down. To be clear, the hood prop does have a lip to prevent such an occurrence, 
but I do not believe it is robust enough to withstand the wind gusts the Oregon coast can throw at it. If for some reason I find that I must raise my hood in inclement weather, I would much rather have a hood hinge system with a strong integrated spring holding my hood up than a hood prop. Cup holder cushion inserts. You may recall when Subaru first marketed the Ascent, one of the features they chose to push, a choice I found rather humorous, was the fact that it has 19 cup holders, a feature that I will admit is handy. When I bought my first Ascent, I placed two water bottles in every door and in the holders for the third row seat for the convenience of my passengers and myself. Well, let me tell you what I learned from that exercise. First, the cup holders in the doors have no padding which meant I had 12 water bottles rattling around in my cabin. I'm sensitive to rattles, so that was extremely annoying. Adding insult to injury, there was a member in my family that would open a bottle and take two little sips and then leave the rest. When I decided to remove all of my rattling water bottles, I discovered 12 open bottles with two little sips out of each one. If your family is like mine, may I suggest that bring your own water bottle and don't let it rattle rule for your peace of mind. That concludes my review of what has changed or not changed that I feel should and my wish list. If you agree with any of the changes I think should or would like to see occur, drop a line to Subaru Customer Care and let them know. Maybe if enough people write in, some of the items on my list will be changed before I purchase my 2022 Ascent. I'd just like to say before I'm killed by my family, just kidding. I hope. Thank you for following along with me through this update review of the Subaru Ascent. Even with the criticisms I just laid out for you, which are not major, I will state that I really love the car and I would absolutely purchase another one. In fact, I already have. For the record, I'm not looking for the perfect vehicle. My idea of the perfect vehicle probably won't align with yours. I based my review on either what I felt was reasonable and or what can be found in comparable class competitor vehicles. Well, if you're still with me and are enjoying the ride, I'm sorry, pardon the pun, and you're willing to stay with me a little longer, I would like to point out a few points about the Ascent that driving my rental Jeep caused me to appreciate. I'm not hating on Jeep, mind you. I've owned three in the past and may yet own another. Window visibility. The large windows of the Ascent make for excellent driver visibility. Feeling of space. The cabin of the Subaru Ascent feels large for its size, almost airy, like I'm sitting in a living room as opposed to a vehicle. Dash layout. Controls are well placed overall and operation for the most part is intuitive. I really appreciate the dash ledges for storing loose items and the large dash cubby, which if used for a phone storage is easily accessible. I dropped my phone into a storage slot in the console of my rental Jeep and could not fit my hand in to retrieve it. My final solution was to use my index and middle fingers like pinchers to extract it. This was extremely time consuming and very inconvenient. Seats are firm, but after a break in period do become more comfortable. The progressive stadium seating as you move back through the seat rows is nice for passenger forward visibility, which I appreciate because I enjoy sitting in the mid-row captain's chairs. Note that when the forward windscreen visors are down, the rear passenger view through the forward windshield is blocked. I feel that the cabin could be made a little quieter, but some of this is attributed to the large overhead sunroof. Closing the sun visor does make the vehicle quieter. The sound system. After a week of listening to the premium sound system in the Jeep Cherokee Limited versus that of the Subaru Ascent Touring, the sound in the Subaru blows away the Jeep. Here's an interesting thing. Both use Harman Kardon with 19 speakers. I do not know if Jeep used comparable equipment or maybe it's the speaker placement in the vehicle but the sound difference is significant. The songs I used for the comparison can be found on YouTube and links are included. They were 16 Tons by Jeff Castellucci, The Sound of Silence by Pentatonix. I chose these two songs because together they provide a wide range for a good sound test. 
The sound system in the Subaru produced a significantly better sound. The high tones were clean and clear, and the low tones were crisp. Conversely, the sound system in the Jeep sounded mushy by comparison. Last topic in my epilogue is the specific concerns I had with my 2020 Subaru Ascent. I would note that since 2017, I've owned four Subarus, a 2017 Outback Limited, a 2019, 2020, and 2021 Subaru Ascents in the Touring Trim Package. Only the 2020 model year Ascent had any warranty issues that required service. I feel that's a rather good track record, better than other make and model vehicles I've had in the past. The first problem was in the passenger seat ventilation system. When it was first activated, the fan that cooled the back of the seat was loud and noisy, but after running for a time, it quieted down. The second is the latch and the overhead sunglass holder. It developed a catch point or hang up point halfway through closing. The next is the driver window, which shuttered when opened or closed. The next was the windscreen visor for the sunroof. When closed, the corner above the driver's side was wrinkled. It was not a significant amount, but the difference in appearance was noticeable to me when I compared it to my other Subarus. Due to COVID-19, I did not have the opportunity to take my Subaru in for these minor issues until my 12,000 mile service, at which time the vehicle was traded for a new 2021. I did not know at first that I would be trading the vehicle, so the items were addressed by the service department. The seat ventilation fan was replaced the next day, the window track was tight and needed slight adjustment to remedy. No big deal. For the sunglass compartment catch, a new replacement piece was ordered. For the sunroof, the service manager and I looked at another new model on the lot and we agreed that it looked better when closed. But after he described to me how much of the car would have to be taken apart to replace the sunscreen, I opted to leave it. Subaru was more than happy to replace it for me though, if I wished. I cannot offer an explanation, but my 2020 had a stiffer ride than my 2019 or my 2021 Ascents. I know it sounds crazy, but two other adults that ride in my car on a regular basis both made unsolicited comments to me, which confirmed what I felt myself when I drove the car, but quite frankly, I thought it was crazy. Another quirk that I did not address but would have if I kept the car was what I would define as a hood flutter. Again, I thought I was crazy, but when I did not observe it in my 2021, I believe it was an issue. The same two passengers also commented on it. Under certain conditions, such as a semi truck passing in the opposite direction, you know, at high speeds, the hood would flutter. Over time, I observed that the forward latch appeared secure as did the hinge points. I think there may have been an issue with the welded reinforcement underneath. Again, this is speculation. I was not overly concerned as I was confident that Subaru would remedy the problem. I did not look forward to recreating the condition for the service department, which is probably why I forgot to mention it when I checked it in for the 12,000 mile service. Well, this concludes all the topics I wish to cover. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. Comments are always welcome and appreciated. As a parting note, here's a picture taken last month with my parents, myself, and my daughter. Three generations all standing with their new 2021 Subarus. Until next time, thank you for watching.